How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome back to the Vancouver Canucks franchise mode here on NHL 24. Moving into episode number 28, the first half of year number 8, moving into the 2030-31 regular season. In the last one, it was a strong off season which focused primarily on banking on the growth of the core that we already have here in Vancouver. It was a very strong draft, we made a lot of selections, it was 11 or 12 picks, we were in the double digits. I'm glad that it wasn't cheese where we made a bunch of first and second round picks. We had great value in the fourth, fifth, sixth round. It was a strong draft for those reasons, but most notably picking up Tupkin and Sidor, two players who are already high overalls at the age of 18. Tupkin, we drafted him 40th overall in the second round. He's already an 80 overall, and we are considering adding him to the lineup this season. On top of that, we have Junior Sidor, who we drafted 36th overall, who is 78 overall. He has, And both of them with top six potential. We're very excited about what they might be. As we know, we've been burned before in the past by uh, high overall players out of the draft, not growing, but we'll see what happens. On top of that, our you know our prospect pool is getting much deeper. Some top sixes, some elites out there. We definitely have a lot of options for ourselves now in terms of some will grow, some will not, and that's okay. We don't need to put all of our eggs in the baskets of two or three players and really hope that they grow, and if they don't, then we're up the creek. In the offseason itself, we didn't make too many changes. We banked on growth, and that's what we saw. Frederick Lundqvist coming off of the Calder Trophy, setting franchise records in goals and points and as a rookie. 43 goals and 72 points for the Swede. He's up to an 87 overall now. Lekera Mackey, after his 40-goal season, has finally grown from the 83 that he was stuck at. 40 goals, 75 points. He's now up to an 86, playing on the top line, the flying Swedes up here. On the second line, Tippett, Markstrom up to a 92, and Atu Ratu. On the third line, we have the addition of Alex Barabanov. Yes, he has AHL top six potential. Yes, he's 36th right now, but he is here for veteran scoring. He just spent the last five or six years in Nashville. He's coming off of a 73-point season. He's a couple of years removed from winning a Stanley Cup in a postseason where he went almost point per game. So Barabanov has a lot of value in terms of simulation. One year, 5 million just to help the depth scoring at the moment playing with Goldman and Pencolzin fourth line Niskala Couturier and Neighbors Niskala is someone who didn't really see any growth he's one of these guys we drafted in the second round of 2027 he was a high overall 76 out of the draft I believe two three years later here he is as a 78 so sometimes these guys just don't grow but we do want to give him a chance at least in the preseason to see what he might be able to do on defense not really any changes here either Quinn Hughes and Philip Hronik top pair that will run once again Quinn Hughes when separated from Hronik saw a drastic drop in his offense when we reunited him with Hironic in the second half of last season he ended up going from like a 55 56 point pace I think it was 56 up to a 76 point season so Quinn Hughes and Philip Hironic yeah we're not breaking them up for the foreseeable future Hannafin and Bouchard on the second with Peak and Bouillon on the third Bouillon coming off of his rookie season he was a 77 now he's up to a 78 so again slow growth for goaltending, it's Hunter Jones backed up by Kira Schmid at the moment, but we also have Ilya Lyanov in the system as third goalie, Akura too as 13th forward, and Jared McIsaac as 7th D. So that's where the NHL roster stands at the moment. In the AHL squad, we have more players we're trying to get growth from. Cody Brown, 77 at 21. Dominguez, 75 at 20. Frolov, 76 at 23. Bomek, 74 at 20. Uh, Gustavo Kelly, six, uh, 75 at 22. Then down here, pretty much these guys, uh, less hope for them. A couple defensemen the lineups where I have to make some changes. Uh, we have to essentially sign some free agents to fit in there. Mohamed Shen's a big one. 22 years old, 75 overall with medium elite potential. We drafted him in the fourth round of 2026. He's had some okay numbers. 36 points this past year in the AHL playing big minutes over 23 and a half minutes per night. But if he doesn't grow an overall, it's hard to really excuse keeping him and wasting the opportunity to use his trade value to help this team. So moving Mohamed Shen sometime this season is definitely a big problem possibility. Goaltending, Oscar Janssen, Rainer Muller, uh, and also uh, Edward Esch in there with medium lead potential. So we got to probably make some sort of decision with the goaltending as well. But there's our lineup to begin year number eight. We're coming off of a Western Conference final exit this last postseason, having not really taken much away from this team. If anything, we've added a little bit to it, and our core has seen growth. It's always a bit concerning when you don't have those big, big names in your top six on the wings. Like, I do think that you need scoring wingers. Pedersen and Markstrom, 94-92, incredible for center one, center two. But the wings, on paper... They are a bit concerning. They're all between 85 and 87. However, when you think about how they've simulated, it's a different story. So we have to really hope that Lungfist, LeCare, Mackey, they can keep it up. Tippett can be another 60-some point player this season. But as always, some changes could be made. I think we have the trade value to do that if need be. 
So all that recap having been said, let's dive into the comments from the last one from the assistant general managers who had a little bit to add headed into this eighth season in Vancouver. Starting it off with Pat who said, I think one of your best draft days ever. High praise from someone who's seen so many drafts and so many seasons on this channel. So many shrewd moves and got nearly all your key targets. I really have no notes. If it were me, I would use Tiupkin on the third line or don't sign him at all until next season. Essentially saying don't sign him just to play him in the AHL. Also, maybe find a team with a decent player available and depth problems, and then you can do a two or three for one kind of trade to make space where you get a stronger third line mate. Makes perfect sense to me, and we'll be discussing a lot about Tiukin in these comments coming up here, so thank you very kindly, Pat. Speaking of those prospects, we might move out with trade value, as I just mentioned a few moments ago. DRK left a comment saying, I would trade a Ratu and a medium league prospect, probably a guy like Mohamed Shen, and go after Lucas Raymond. Now, Lucas Raymond is on the block in Detroit, and of course, he's another Swedish player. We're essentially building Team Sweden's top six over here. Atu Ratu, he's coming off of a tough season. He's been, he's shown himself to be a 50 point guy, 50 plus point guy. He had a 44 point season last year, but that was with him getting demoted a little bit to the third line. But that's only because Josh Norris was here. Allow Ratu to come back into his top six role. No longer first line left wing, but now second line left wing. A little less pressure with Lungfist having taken that spot. Bring him back to, you know, maybe 18, 19 minutes. Give him his spot on power play unit number one, if possible. If not, we can still keep him on unit number two. And I think he could bounce back and be that player that we've seen. He's been a great trooper through this entire franchise mode. He spent his entire career here in Vancouver. Aside from 12 games with the Islanders, almost 500 games as a Canuck. He's been over his head a little bit it as a first liner but if we can have him settle into second line left wing that would be great long term especially if we have him signed on for four more years including this one at 5.25 million i would love and prefer to keep ratu but you gotta admit lucas raymond coming in is very tempting again on paper he'd be a perfect fit but in simulation talk we have two 40 goal scorers on line one we have a 60 point score in the ratu at his best we have stefan markstrom who just scored 91 points this past season as a playmate and the goal scorer is Owen Tippett, who, although he hasn't scored as much, had a 68-point season. Hopefully, maybe now he can hit 30 goals with Markstrom and Ratu as his wings. I don't know. It comes down to how these players mesh together. But all I have to say, Lucas Raymond is most certainly on our radar. Could it be that Tippett moves up to the first line and one of the scorers in Lundqvist or Lecaire Mackey come down to the second line? It's possible. We can mix and match in that top six. But again, just to have options in mind, always good to have. Next comment coming in from Cheating Heel, who said, GM Data showing up at the draft and telling the other GMs not to bother flying over as they won't be drafting. We get all the draft picks. I don't think there's any hole in our prospect pool now. Every position is well covered. That being said, I do think it's time to pull the plug on some of them. The lack of growth from a lot of them is concerning. If you're 22 or 23 and you're around 75 or 76 overall or less, it's not acceptable. In my book, at 23, you need to at least be able to play fourth line in franchise mode or you're out. I would target a couple of the following. Some prospects in Anaheim, Arizona, Nashville, and Ottawa. Thank you. We're going to keep our eye on those. We also have the option to package a couple of them to try and get a first round pick back. We have no first. We traded to the Canadians in the Markstrom deal, so we have no first. We do have a second and a couple thirds, I believe. As for Tupkin, I say we sign him so we can control his ice time in the AHL to maximize growth potential, and if we need help in the bottom six, at least he'd be an available option to us. Maybe we also get someone like Bork in Boston for our bottom six if he sims decent. I'm going to build on Tupkin in a moment with the next comment once I finish off cheating heels here. If Ratu is still underperforming after 20-ish games, maybe we can look at trading him for Paterka in Carolina, or dare I say it, Swedish star Raymond in Detroit. We'd be one Swede away from having Sweden's potential Olympic top six as our top six. <laughs> Looking at extensions, Noah Hannafin on defense, he's been very good for us, but I'm not sure I'd put five or six million on him now that he's at, what, 33, 34? If Maxim Bouillon can grow a bit, he'll need to take his spot to get extra ice time soon enough. If not, is there any potential left DUFA next offseason? We spoke about that a little bit more in follow-up comments. Just out of curiosity, what's the chemistry like if you swap Markstrom and Pedersen? Right now we have plus three and zero on line one and two respectively. If we swap Pedersen and Markstrom, it goes plus one plus one, so not a huge change really. Also, our staff chemistry, here's a big one, is under 60%. Maybe we need to move someone. Not sure which of the four is the troublemaker in the bunch, but let's get the pitchforks out. Very, very good draft as always, buddy. There wasn't a lot to do with the team, and Barabanov is a decent addition, but we'll need to pull the trigger sooner rather than later if Ratu doesn't get back on track, as Barabanov might be able to replace him short term, but we need a long-term fix if Ratu is not going to be what we expected. Can't wait to see what our kids have learned from last offseason and how they put it to good use. Go 
Nux. All that is so very well said, Cheating Heel. Thank you for leaving those thoughts. And it goes perfectly into Rocky Mountain Russian's comment, Narf, who said, need to make sure your AHL head coach is A plus teaching and A influence. I believe that is the reason the growth hasn't been great. Also, I understand holding an open slot for the AHL goalie coach, but putting one with A plus teaching in there would grow the goalies a lot. I think you may be missing that and it's causing a lot less growth than should happen. So both in the NHL and the AHL, the coaching staff could use a little bit of an overhaul here. In the AHL, excuse me, in the NHL, our staff chemistry is at 57%. I took a little look and it seems as though Ferriero has the lowest staff, uh, the lowest morale, I should say. And we look at the other coaches, low coach chemistry with Ferriero, uh, head coach low with Ferriero. And we look at Ferriero himself, he has low chemistry with Capusa, who's our head coach. So maybe not even firing him, but maybe demoting him to the AHL. He does have A- minus teaching, so demoting him to the AHL might be an idea for us, because as we were just saying, we need to fill that spot. Um, a plus teaching for Randy Simpson. So, and this guy had C-. So I was thinking, what if Randy Simpson goes down to AHL goalie coach? Uh, Petruzalik, he's pretty happy, but what if we put him down to AHL associate? We can keep low, actually, no, hold on. He goes to AHL head, low comes to AHL associate, Petruza whatever goes to AHL associate, assistant, then Ferriero comes down to AHL head. His, uh, it brings the staff chemistry down to 35%, but I don't know, do we care enough about that? In the NHL, it would bring it down to 60, uh, bring it up, excuse me, to 60%. So it's not a huge jump there from 57 to 60, but it does go up a little bit. In the AHL, it takes a big hit down to 35, but we don't really care about how the team performs as much as how it grows, right? But, I don't know, maybe that's, maybe that's not a good idea, because he's very unhappy, it seems like, to be in that role. Uh, no one has low chemistry with him, at least there's that. What kind of fit does he have with the team? 58%? There's a big drop in Ronick as well. Big drop in his uh, morale. Staff chemistry at 60, yes. I don't know, could there be another A-plus coach out there who's not an A-plus overall guy who wants to be a head coach somewhere else and he's upset? But it's crazy because B-rated coaches want to be NHL head coaches. It doesn't make any sense. There are some other A-plus guys, though, who are B. Uh, even this guy who wants to be an AHL head coach has A-plus teaching, Drew Ferrelli. So I think there could be some changes. Maybe Chance Ronick ends up leaving. Chance Ronick is not happy to be an A-plus coach as an assistant coach. That's understandable. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Chance Ronick will also be fired. That uh, chemistry now down to 50. What? Maybe it's because there's not enough coaches, but bring it down to 50. And Ferriero, fine. I'm going to fire you as well. 50 there. Uh, 46 here too. Okay, we're overhauling both coaching staffs here. Just <sighs> making decisions on the fly. We gotta keep a spot open. Okay, so we gotta, now we have to. We do have to play musical chairs, keeping a spot open. So here's what's gonna happen: We're gonna hire an AHL head coach with A plus teaching, an NHL goalie coach with A plus teaching, and an NHL assistant coach who just has a good fit and could just be a good addition to the squad. So I'm gonna take care of that and be back in a second. Okay, so I sent out a couple of offers. Let's advance a couple of days now since we have some time until the preseason. Let's use that to try and fix our coaching staff here. Uh, yeah, Abbotsford Canucks, breaking news. They fired their head coach. Uh, Drew Ferrelli, okay, as NHL goalie coach, who's actually going to be our uh, AHL uh, head coach. Uh, okay, I'm willing to live with it. Thank you, Grayson McKenzie, for making the sacrifice to take millions of dollars to come be an NHL coach and not be unemployed. Okay, so this is how it's going to work now. Ferrelli is actually my head coach. So here comes the musical chairs. Petruzalek is going to go down to goalie coach. Lowe's going to go down to assistant coach. Simpson down to associate coach. Goalie coach down to AHL head coach. And this guy, Grayson McKenzie, can go to NHL goalie coach. I'm going to hire a new actual associate coach. Oh my goodness. So AHL morale is up to 62%. People are happier. And our head coach now has, drum roll, A plus teaching, A minus influence. Great news. Now I just need to hire an NHL assistant coach to add to Kapusta, Suter, and McKenzie. And it looks like that guy will be Christopher Noakes. A plus in the teaching, good on the special teams as well. B rated, so he's okay to be an associate. Just the best mix of everything it looks like. So again, let's give you a nice big contract. And hopefully he'll want to sign on if he can find it somewhere in the goodness of his heart to take like 1.7 million to not be unemployed for the next eight years. So that would be the coaching. Oof, that's a massive overhaul, but I think it was overdue at this point. 
As Michael Ack had said over in the Discord server, why haven't we overhauled our minor league coaching yet? We are not getting the development we want out of prospects on the development front and haven't for years. Something's got to give, Bellow. And I 100% agree. It came down to more. I wanted to keep that, that uh, AHL goalie spot open. Plus, I just thought it was more of the game because it's been Vancouver and in San Francisco. But you know what? Let's give it our best. If it's the game, then it's the game and it's broken. But let's at least say that we gave it our best effort to make the, the growth work in the AHL. Speaking of the AHL and growth, I think we do want to sign to Yupkin. I was leaning towards more keeping him overseas, but when I see that Pit Colson has gone even down from an 82 to an 81, even though he simulated like an absolute beast in the postseason, there's no guarantee that he can maintain that as an 81 overall on the third line on a Stanley Cup contender. Next postseason, if he wants to show that same type of uh, level of play again, I have no problem promoting him. I don't know if we can put him full-time third liner as an 81 overall. I don't know. Tiupkin though, Marion Tiupkin, as Cam said in Discord server, the overall is deceiving. Most of his stats are actually in the mid 80s, so I think he should get a shot. Then going on to say, as for potential trades, I like Lucas Raymond, but not for middle six. I think the team would benefit from a better first line right wing since Lekaramaki somehow dropped to top nine. Again, he's still a 40 goal scorer, but we'll see what happens this season with Lekaramaki. Another possible target could be Seth Jarvis. And I think if Barabanov is able to be slipped down to the fourth line because he's gonna fall off a cliff with his HL potential, it'd be ideal. So hopefully Tiupkin slash whoever you trade for can take that spot. Excellent drafting as always and great episode. Also, as a Bruins fan, I'm not too upset with last year's result. LOL. There you go, Cam. Thank you kindly. So it's a great point. When you look at the Tiupkin's overall, maybe it's a 75 poise, the 70 fighting skill. He could maybe be more like an 81 even. And I know that's not saying much, but at 18 years of age, that would make a difference. So I think we will sign Tiupkin with the goal of playing him in the NHL this season for all those reasons, plus the fact that we've tried pretty much everything with these players who are uh, who are 80 overall out of the draft. We've signed and played in the AHL like Niskala and Brown and saw nothing. We've let them grow for an extra couple of years like Goldman and saw nothing. So let's now try signing them right out of the draft and playing in the NHL and see if that will get some growth. So Marion Tupkin, it's been a dream of mine to join this team. I will not let you down. Thank you, Marion. We'll sign you right away. Sidor can stay in the juniors since we wouldn't be able to sign him and play him in the AHL either way. And now Tupkin will fight in the preseason to get that third line spot. So essentially, I guess it's going to be like, I guess, Niskala, uh, Tupkin, and Neighbors fighting for three players fighting for two spots, one on the third line, one on the fourth line. So I won't touch special teams and all that just yet. We're going to roll in the preseason with the lines looking something like this. Jake Neighbors, we already know who he is, so I wouldn't mind giving him the least amount of games in the preseason. I still want to play him, but I'll give him the least amount. And let me go ahead and call up Tupkin and get him in the lineup. So Tupkin comes up and Ratu just for the moment can go down since waivers are not going just yet. We have him pretty much just to keep Atu happy, but we love Aku as well. So Niskala will play third line with Goldman and Barabanov at the moment. Who knows that third line center? This is a big year for Tom Goldman. It's his third year in the NHL. He has not budged from 80 overall. If he's going to be a full-time third liner on a contender, he's got to grow into... Already I made the argument about Pip Colson, and now even Niskala is a 78, so you really got to get some growth to 81, 82, and hopefully within a couple of years, 84, we got to see something from Tom Goldman. So Neighbors will come out for the moment. Tupkin will come in. Uh, I guess we'll play him fourth line to start. He has a great second line fifth though, eh? Maybe we should give them middle six. Yeah, let's, let's give them both middle six. Let's give them both middle six. Ratu and these guys, we know who they are. No one in our top six is coming out of the lineup. So let's give Tupkin and Niskala all games on the second and third line. Maybe the last couple of games can be third, fourth line. But well, we'll try them both. So two can, can start on the second. Nisla can start on the third. And we'll see how the preseason goes from there. Not touching special teams or anything just yet. So the first game of the preseason will be up against the Seattle Kraken. Interesting offer there from the Wild. We'll pass. Uh, Christopher Noakes on board. There you go. That's the final piece of our coaching staff puzzle. Thank goodness. Now we cross our fingers and hope that we see good results. Staff chemistry up to 67. That's a 10% boost. Very good. And the AHL at 50. All right. I think we made the right decisions there for the coaching. I think the right uh, coaches were hired. Now we go from there. So game one of the preseason. Let's start flying through these. First game ends 4-2 in our favor, winning the first game of the preseason. Barabanov with two assists, that's great. Uh, plus minuses, anything scary? Ooh, negative two from Bouchard. Negative one from uh, Ratu and Bouillon as well. Uh, Hunter Jones uh, making 28 saves on 30 shots. 
Next game, we'll give the start to Akira Schmid. Now, we picked him up at last year's deadline. Remember, he did well. He was 7-2, 923 save percentage, but we still started with Hunter Jones in the postseason. However, after Hunter Jones started to fall apart, we did indeed turn to Akira Schmid, and he went 9-4-2 with two shutouts, a 926 save percentage, and 2.38 goals against average. So Schmid is definitely in the conversation to fight for a full-time spot. Leonov's going to try and get back into the conversation too, but we got to see what they can do in the preseason. So next game here against the Anaheim Ducks. Now we lose this one by a score of three to two, but we did see a goal from Niskala. There's that at the very least. Plus two from Hannafin, negative ones from most of our players here, unfortunately. Even Tupkin, negative one. He didn't get too much ice time. I guess lots of uh, special teams there. And Schmid made 28 saves on 31 shots. For this next game, we're going to swap Niskala and Tyupkin, and I think I'm going to go ahead and get Ratu back on the second line. we got to get him back into mid-season form, right? So Ratu will play with Markstrom and Ratu. And for the goaltenders, we'll keep Schmid as backup, and Lyonov will get a start. Ilya Lyonov, in his rookie season last year, went 10-8-2 and with a 902 save percentage and 3.05 goals against average. Wasn't bad at all, but Schmid was just so good when we got him at the deadline. So let's get this next game here going against the Edmonton Oilers. We lose this one 2-1 in the shootout. It was a Tight one, one goal coming from Frederick Lundqvist. Plus minus, we have some negatives here. Niskala negative one. Just little things to keep an eye on. And Leonov, though, big performance. 30 saves on 31 shots. So I don't think I'm going to touch anything for this next game against the Kings here. Let's keep Leonov as the starter. And we'll keep Niskala and Tukin where they are in the middle six. Okay, big 5-2 win against the Kings. Markstrom, Ratu, Niskala, and Tippett, all with two points. Peak has a plus three. Hironic and Hughes, the only negatives there, unfortunately. Tukin, not a lot of ice time. Maybe he was injured for some reason there. Had to stay out. Pre uh, precautionary reasons. 17 saves on 19 shots as well for Leonov. Maybe let's try something like this. I know I said I want to give a lot of games in the middle six to Tyupkin, but maybe, I don't know, that line with him and Goldman uh, and Barabanov is not su working super well. Niskala just scored a couple goals in the last couple games. Let's try Barabanov being the playmaker and Goldman being the centerman on that line. And Tyupkin, okay, you know what? No, I'll give, I'll give one last game. One last game, and let's go crazy. First line minutes for Tyupkin to play with Lundqvist and Pedersen. Give him a plus three, every opportunity to succeed, why not? Leonov looked good too, so we're going to jump back to Schmid. We know who Jones is, so let's jump back to Schmid and give him another start. And it ends up being a 4-3 win against the Calgary Flames. All right, two points from Lundqvist, two points from Hughes. Goldman finally gets an assist, that's great. Uh, some, a lot of, some plus twos out there, but a lot of negative ones including Niskala, okay, where was uh, Tyupkin, he was even plus minus, eight shots, whoa, that's interesting for simulation numbers, even if he doesn't score, I love high shooting simulating players, and then Schmid made 17 saves on 20 shots, so was that just a coincidence, or have I been missing something here, uh, no, okay, 18 shots in five games, so he's averaging a little bit over three shots per game, Tyupkin is, but was it because of the ice time, let's give him another game on the first line and see if it was just a fluke or not, I'd be curious, and for Schmid, uh, boof. let's, um, huh, uh, how did Hunter Jones look again in his game? Yeah, he looked good, but he needs to get some time as well. Okay, another start to Hunter Jones. We'll see how he does, and I'll decide who gets the start for the last game of the preseason. We're already down to the last couple games here against the Sharks now. We win this one 3-2 in the shootout. Couturier, Lekaramaki, Tippett, Barabanov, only four points scored. So two goals with just a primary assist on them. Shots in this one, Lundqvist had eight shots. Tukin took four. Okay, okay. And goaltending, Jones made 17 saves on 19 shots. So last game of the preseason now. Let's try and get an actual idea of what our lineup might be. I said Jake Neighbors would be fighting for a spot, kind of, but I ended up just wanting to see a lot from Tukin and Niskla, so sorry about that, Jake. Uh, let's get Tukin back to the fourth line. Playing with Couturier and put Coles in. Put Coles in at three assists quietly. There you go. Niskala, Goldman, Barabanov. Let's keep it like that for now. Niskala, I've been liking what he's been showing up and down. Uh, and then defense. Defense has been so-so. Plus two, plus three, plus two, negative one, plus one, plus two. Okay, maybe just not a lot of scoring from them, I gotta say. So I don't mean to be unfair. Jones, let's give Leonov another start here. If Leonov blows it, then maybe that opens the door to Schmid a little bit. But Schmid was the one who struggled a little bit more. And Leonov's the one who has more to prove, so that's why I want to see more from him. So, final game of the preseason here, up against Vegas. Leonov getting the start, trying to be the opening night backup. First period, 1-1. Second period, 2-1 Geeky. Third period, 3-2. Big comeback, Ratu with the game winner. And another big night from Leonov. I know it's the preseason, but still. So, two points from Lekaramaki and Pedersen. 29 saves on 31 shots from Leonov. That's a 3-2 victory to end... 
five, one, and one through the preseason. Five goals, eight points in seven games from LeCare Mackey. Love to see it. Aside from that, seven points from Lundqvist and Tippett. Five from Pedersen. Four from Berbanov. Krona Hughes. Three for Ratu, but negative three. Three for Niskala. Three for Markstrom. Eh, that's odd. Maybe we need a better score on that second line. Negative one. Picoles in three. Couturier two. Peak Bouchard. Goldman. Nothing from Hennepin Bouillon. Tupkin, no points in seven games. That was concerning. So we said we didn't want to play him in the AHL, but maybe with the updated coaching staff, that could be something. So pointless through seven games in the preseason. We'll give him his nine-game trial in the regular season, but then we got to make a decision. If he's still pointless or not looking great, I don't know, he did take 22 shots, which is nice, but... I don't know. For the goaltenders, he saw some interesting performances across the board. Jones was 2-0, Leonov 2-0-1, and Schmid 1-1. Of course, the best number is going to Leonov and the worst to Schmid, but such a small sample size. Schmid essentially had one good game and one not-so-good game. So I think Jones is starting and Leonov is backing up just to start the season because you can't deny that Leonov did a great job. If we didn't give Leonov the backup job after that preseason, I think it would just say the preseason means nothing. we got to say it means something. It doesn't mean a lot, but it means something. Schmid will be ready to slot in if and when needed for injury or for performance uh, woes whatever it might be we know that we can trust him even if the preseason wasn't so hot just because of like one bad show so not a huge deal so we got to give Tiukin an honest chance here in the lineup we probably got to play him a bit more than just fourth line minutes so i'm going to find some time maybe in the first nine games he can get power play or something give him a chance to succeed then we'll go from there but essentially what i'm going to do now is update the special teams i'm going to sign at least a couple forwards for the ahl because there's a couple defensemen here playing in the lineup then we got to think about who is excess. We're going to assign a couple players to the AHL, maybe even three or four. And we'll see from that lineup who then drops to being a healthy scratch, who still has kind of some potential at 23-24, and who gets traded out. So I'll take care of the special teams and all that free agency, whatever, between the NHL and the AHL. I'm going to advance a couple days to see if they get signed on, which shouldn't be a problem since the season starts in like four days. And then I'll get back in a second. All right, like 40 minutes later, lines are done, scouting set, let's do it. All right, so in the NHL, special teams have been fixed up. Uh, we're going to roll like this to start through the nine-game trial of Tiupkin and go from there. Same, it's also a nine-game trial for Niskala, pretty much. So power play unit number one will look like this with the plus five. Unit number two will look like this with the plus one. Unfortunate for the plus minus. I'm giving Barabon off the spot right now because of his playmaking ability. But if he is starting to regress more and more, that will be an open power play spot for one of the young players. All right, down in the AHL, just looking at our actual lineup, five on five. This is going to be how we roll to start the season. Chemistry isn't great, but that's mostly because there are not really, you know, there's no X factors. So there are the lines, and there's offense and defense. When it comes to who is the excess, it looks like Carter Cook is the big one. Low top 4D, 69 overall, 21 years old, third round pick in 2027. He was a gem when drafted. Two and a half star defense now, just nothing really going for him at the moment. It's unfortunate that he hasn't grown at all. Sergeyev, Siegel, they don't really have any potential. Uh, Ratu is just here for the moment while we wait to see what happens in the NHL. But Edward Esch, another one who we want to get into the lineup. And it comes down to Oscar Janssen or Rainer Muller. Yes, Rainer Muller is 23 with medium league potential, 75 overall, but goalies don't really have much trade value. Mohamed Shen and his medium league potential versus Rainer Muller and his medium league potential are two very different things. It's almost not even worth it to trade this goalie for like a fourth round pick. I'd rather just keep him and cross my fingers and see if we get some growth. So I think I'm going to try making Rainer Muller the, the, the starter here in the AHL. Edward Ash can be the backup because he is, yes, 12 overall less than Muller, but three years younger, also with medium league potential. And I think the excess will then be Oscar Janssen. We drafted him. I think he was a 75 overall out of the draft. Like four years later, he's grown one overall. Come on. He, yeah, he was a fringe starter, but three full years in the AHL. I, did we sign him right away? At least three years we've had him. So it just, it doesn't make sense that there's been no growth from him. We really were hopeful at one point when he was such a high overall out of the draft, but Oscar Janssen and Carter Cook seem to be two players who we could trade out. What would the trade value be? Not very much. We could just hold them until a trade comes our way, but I think it would make more sense to just move them now. It's, uh, who are these guys? Yeah, Carter Cook, almost no trade value. And look at the, yeah, we have a lot of goalies in here, so if we could just get one out of the system, that would go a long way on top of that. So good to just do a little bit of a cleanup here. The question will be, are there teams who want both of them? And if yes, can we get some picks? No, no team that wants both of them. So I'm just going to find a team that could take them. We'll trade them for picks. I'm not going to look to try to get prospects out of this. They're excess. They're pretty much minimum value. I'm just going to try to get something done. Let's go for the Lightning. We're going to fourth round pick from the Lightning. Probably maybe even a little bit more. 
Can we get a third? Because we're trading as two players who were drafted in the second and third round, respectively, right? Second round pick, third round pick. Can I get a third back, Tampa Bay? No, trade rejected. Can I add a little bit, or do I have to settle for a fourth? I don't want to give you a sixth. I give you. I, we're using all of our sevenths always. Uh, okay, 2033 sevenths to make it happen. There you go. All right, 2033 sevenths to make it happen. We throw a third into this year's stockpile. Now we have a second, three thirds, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth for the 2031 draft. So thank you, Tampa Bay. Oscar Anson and Carter Cook off to Tampa. Eastern Conference, see you later. Thank you for contributions to Abbotsford, and we go from there. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's kick off year number eight, the 2030-31 season. The lineup is set for the next nine games. We'll see where it goes from there. Hunter Jones getting the start. Niskala and Tyukin making their NHL debuts. Barabanov making his uh, Canucks debut. I think that's about it. So, let's do it. Looking to run it back after having such a strong season last year. A few years removed from our Stanley Cup and from our President's Trophy. Let's have a strong year number eight campaign with the Reigns here in Vancouver. First period and starts off 2-0. Great way to start the season. Elias Pettersson opens it up. There is our pillar on the first line. And Atu Ratu, who saw his name in the headlines, he opens it up with a goal in the first five minutes. Four minutes and 11 seconds to be precise. Shots 14 to 5 after 20. Second period, 3-0. Frederick Lundqvist in his sophomore season starts it off with a goal. Shots are 27 to 12 after 40 minutes. And we hold a 3-0 lead to open up year number eight. With the Canucks, Rob Thomas will break the shutout, unfortunately, on Hunter Jones, but he's still looking strong. We have a two-goal lead halfway through this third period, close to, getting close to doubling the shots, almost. Uh, what, 34-22? Yeah, we're up by 12. Okay. Final two minutes of this one. Not much scoring in the third period, and that'll be enough to hold it down. Owen oh, Tippett adds the empty nighter for good measure, and shots end 35-25 to in a 4-1 season opener. 24 saves from Hunter Jones, bouncing back from his rocky postseason. Stefan, the silver surfer, Markstrom with two assists for second star, and Aturatu with what ended up being the game-winning goals. So we win first game back at home to start it off, the home opener and the season opener. Let's get to the calendar now to sit through the first nine games with our little trial here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and game number nine will be up against the Edmonton Oilers. Actually, maybe let's go see the Bruins for game eight. Just for, as reigning Stanley Cup champions, we have their history with them. Uh, LeCarrie Mackey, mild concussion to start off the season. <sighs> Lovely. So Tippett will come up. Uh, you know what? Let's say Niskala comes up because another playmaker in Barabanov would make a lot of sense. And to you can good opportunity for him to see more, um, a little bit more ice time. Yeah, as fourth liner. And Jake Neighbors comes in as fourth liner. LeCarrie Mackey isn't out for long, so I'll just let Neighbors do what he wants there, filling in in all lines. Uh, okay, so 5-4 loss, 3-2 loss, 4-3 overtime loss, ooh. Then a 5-3 win, bouncing back against the Blues, 2-2-1. Two, two, Let's get the next couple games done. We have three games against the Blues in the first three weeks of the season. On the road, 4-0 win to shut out the Stars. Love to see that. And Lekar Mackey back in the lineup now. So Lekar Mackey back in. How's Barabanov doing? I'm just curious. One goal, two is You know what? He has power play time. Let's put him on the fourth line just for the nine-game trial. Let's you can Goldman and Niskala play together. Why not? Little, uh... Not a kid's line, but a f injured foot out for a few days is Evan Bouchard. Not really a kid's line per se, but just a younger line. So peek out. You know what? Let's let Bouillon come out. Bouillon needs to get some more ice time out here. So Bouillon will come up, and then Jared McIsaac will slot in third pair with Andrew Peak. Of course, you say replace in all lines, but by all lines, did you mean every line except four-man power play? Yes, that's exactly what I meant, EA. Thank you. Then you go to it, and he's already there. <laughs> what is this? 3-1 uh, win there, uh, very nice. We're 4-2-1 facing our old friends, the Boston Bruins, hosting them now here in 2030. Close to two decades removed from that game back in 2011. Let's do it. Reigning Stanley Cup champs welcomed in. 1-0 Bruins after 20, Pavel Zaka. Second period, woohoo! 5-1. Lone goal for us coming from Niskala, at least there's that. We're being outshot 29-19, and we're down by four. Power play, all right, there's Lucas making it down by three. Oh, okay, all right! Owen Tippett makes it a two-goal game. Power play again for Vancouver. This time killed off. We're only down by two now. Down by four versus down by two is a whole different story, but then we give them a four-minute power play. Thankfully, we kill it off. Now we have a power play, but then they kill it off. So an exciting third period, but probably just not quite enough, and no, we'll fall short. Five through the final. Outshot 41 to 32 in that one. Uh, at least we got a couple of stars. Tip it in long fist. That'll keep us warm tonight. All right, then game number nine against the Oilers. Final chance for Tupkin and Niskla to do something on the road in Edmonton. We'll sim through it. 4-3 overtime loss. So through the first nine games of the season, we are 4-3-2. We have nine points in nine games from Elias Pettersson. 
And when we look at the third liners, let's see him. Niskala. Miko Niskala with three goals in nine games. Okay. A plus three. I'm not uh, disgusted. One goal and 14 penalty minutes from Tom Goldman. I'm getting closer and closer to playing the plug on the experiment here with Tom Goldman. Maybe uh, Sean Couture should bump up. He's a negative five, though, so maybe that could help the fourth. I don't know. Tupkin, e one assist, negative two. I think Tupkin's going to go down. Yeah, I think Tupkin's going to go down. So here's what's going to happen. Barabanov's going to come back up. I'll put Goldman back for the time being since Barabanov's coming up. So we'll go Barabanov, Goldman, Niskala. On the fourth line, we're going to go uh, Neighbors with Couturier and Podkolzin. And then we're going to go ahead and send down Tupkin. I know it's not ideal. We didn't want him playing the AHL. But it doesn't use a year of its ELC, and we do have the overhauled uh, AHL coaching, so maybe that helps us out. It was a bit of a gamble. I was hoping it would work out. Hasn't really. We'll give him a year to tear it up in the AHL, and hopefully next year he's ready. So Ratu will get called up, and Tukin will go down. Let me just fix up the lines now. All right, and there we go. And you know what? Tukin's actually going to play first line center in the AHL. He actually has 79 faceoffs. So you know what? Maybe he grows and he ends up being our third line center. The elusive third line center that Tom Goldman seems to have the role that has been carved out for him, just slipping away through his fingertips, just given to him on a platter and he can't just seem to take it. So let's get going now with this, the squad pretty much being what I think it'll be looking like throughout the rest of the season. Let's do it here against the 7-1-0 Florida Panthers. Niskla is going to stay on for the year. Hopefully he can run with that opportunity as well and Tukin will be in the AHL. First period, 1-0. It's Tom Goldman. He heard his name. Tom Goldman makes it 1-0. Second period, 4-0 Lungfist, Markstrom, and then Lungfist again, 4-0 Canucks, 2 from Frederick here in his sophomore season. Let's just call it there. Ooh, a bit of a comeback from the uh, from the Panthers, but we win it 6-3 the final. Bublié, Samoskovic, and our old friend Dougie Hamilton, but we hang on for 6-3 being the final scoreline. Two goals and assists from Lundqvist, two goals from Markstrom, and three assists from EP40, giving us a big 6-3 victory. Now let's get back into the calendar for some long-term simulation, at least until the next time we have to update the scouting, which is November 13th, if I remember correctly. So we'll go exactly until then. A couple of weeks of games between now and then. And Evan Boucher fully healthy he'll get back in Maxim Bouillon how have you been doing three assists plus five all right not too shabby peaks looking okay McIsaac had an assist and was a plus two in three games so Bouillon will go back to his rightful spot Bouchard will come back to where he's supposed to go he had two assists eh. so he's got to be a guy who picks it up this season as well four three shootout loss to the Blue Jackets five one win against the Jets three two loss against the Preds 5-2 loss in Seattle. 9-0 shutout victory against the Sharks. Oh my goodness. But then a 6-4 loss against the Kraken. Losing twice in a couple of weeks to them. We're 7-6-3 at the moment. Let's just update the scouting. Okay, back to it now. 23 points in 16 games from EP40. He's looking great, but we're still just above 500, 7-6-3. Hosting the Penguins at home, 4-2 win. All right, back to the calendar now. We're going to get back in the win column. I don't see any games against Colorado coming up, eh? We want to definitely go see them. Let's just start simming and see what happens. Let's just get into it and go from here. Hosting the Capitals, 4-2 loss. In Minnesota, peak sore shoulder. These injuries, sore foot, sore shoulder, but get a magic bag, get a massage. You're going to be out for two weeks because of soreness? Come on now. So Jared McIsaac going to come back into the lineup. He'll play third pair with um, Boudillon. Don't worry about the chemistry. Uh, good year for rookies, says the amateur scout. Yeah, I know I made that mistake. It's a high, low class this year. I got to pause, go back, look. My goodness, 4-1 win, 4 nothing shutout in Chicago on the road. Then a 2-1 loss hosting the Canadians. Uh, the Lightning are 15-5-1. Ooh, maybe the President's Trophy leaders at the moment. Let's go see them. The team that we had just made the trade to, uh, Jansen and Cook. First period, 2-1. Hagel scores early, then Duclair again. But Tom Goldman shorthand getting the lone goal in the period for us. Second period, ooh, 6-2. A five-goal period chasing Vasilevsky from the crease. Marks from on the power play, and then Lundqvist, Tippett, Pedersen, and Ratu, all with the even strength goals. Even one on Kakman coming in in relief. And this one ends 7-3 the final. Gord adds a shorthanded goal. Markstrom puts one more to get the extra point. Two goals and two assists for Markstrom to be the first star. Ratu with a goal and two assists. Tippett a goal and an assist. Big 7-3 victory against a very good Lightning squad. So a nice little string we've had in the last week or two. 11-7-4. I still want to see a better uh, level of consistency, probably. 
Markstrom pulled groin. Oh my goodness, out for a little bit. All these little injuries. So here's your big chance, Tom Goldman. Come on down. Here is your big chance. We'll have a Goldman play second line. Couture up to the third, and then on the fourth line, Aku can Aku play here? Six, no, Aku cannot go there. Actually, everyone has 65 faceoffs, so someone's gonna have to go there. Uh, if we go scratch, Aku. Where is faceoff? 66. Actually, he has the best. So 66. Akuratu is going to draw into the lineup. Couture bumps up. Goldman bumps up. Here's a big chance for Tommy. Quint for Rodriguez in a fourth. No thank you. Uh, Quint for a third and a sixth. No thank you. Pause here. Okay, so 4-3 loss. Then a followed by a 5-3 win. Uh, Marshman should be back within the next couple games here. So it's not a, the end of the world for us. Peak should be back soon as well. 7-3 win. Let's go. Peak is back on board. Quietly a good third pair defensive defenseman. We love him. Jerry McIsaac, how you doing? Nine games, one assist, plus five. Love it. Andrew Peak is back in. What's he been doing? Three goals, two assists, plus seven. Good stuff. Andrew Peak's back on board. And Marksman should be back after this game against the Bruins. Five to loss against the Penguins. And then Muller for a fourth and a sixth. No thank you. In Boston, 5-3 win. Where is uh, where's Markstrom? One more game against the Hurricanes? Did I misread when he was coming back? I thought it was December 6th. Uh, December 11th. Okay, I must have misread it then. It's a currently unplayable injury, but we definitely don't want to do that if we don't have to. So a couple more games without Mark Strum. Yeah, two more games without him. On the road to face the Flyers. A hey, I'm broken toe for Hunter Jones, and he's out for about, what is that, like four weeks? Oh, Hunter Jones. This is Leonov's chance. His numbers have been okay. Now it's between Leonov and Schmidt to hold the fort while Jones is out. How had Jones been doing? Uh, he was looking okay. 9-10 save percentage. Oh, that one hurts. Markstrom's back to full health. We beat the Flyers 3-1 in Philly. Little Eastern Conference swing there. Tommy, how you doing with your increased ice time? 8 goals, 5 assists, plus 7. 13 points on pace to break his career high of 25 in back-to-back -back seasons. I don't think we'll pause to look at the stats until the halfway point at, you know, with how things have been going. But okay, Couture, what are you up to? Two goals, five assists, negative 10. Oh my. And Ratu has fourth line center, a goal, two assists, negative one. Okay. Uh, sorry, and Neighbors, what's he up to? Goal, six assists, plus one. But goals in five, goals, four assists, negative two. Maybe Couturier comes out, but for the moment, we'll keep him in until the halfway point, and we can reevaluate then. Markstrom back in the lineup, Leonov and Schmid getting the starts, let's do it. And then there's one more game on the road there, 6-3 win against the Preds, lovely. We're 16-10-4, who do we want to go see? Calgary's a good team, yeah, let's go see Calgary, on the road to face the Flames. Good old Canadian matchup there. 3 1 loss and a 2 1 loss. Lovely. Uh, Flames are 16, 17, and 5. Same amount of wins, but we have more losses and more games played. First period 0 0. Second period 2 1. Tuck and Coronado scoring for them. Lungfist scores for us. Leonov in for this one. Two goals and 30 shots through two periods. He's made 28 saves already. Third period, Shea Theodore extends the lead to two. We gotta get something going. And thank you, it's Jake Neighbors on Dustin Wolf, but then Huberdo answers right back on the power play. Uh, back to being down by two halfway through the third period. It's the worst lead to have. One goal to go a long way for us here late in the final five minutes. Uh, but the scoring is not coming. As we score, what, four goals in our last three games? One, one, and two? Yikes, that's three consecutive regulation losses. Schmid should be in for this next one. Uh, yeah, let's keep going here against the Ducks, then the Kraken on the road. 2-1 loss, very nice. 2-1 loss. The Penguins offering us Jake Gensel. Oh my goodness. We'll look at that at the halfway point. Um, you know what? Let's keep let's keep Schmied in a little bit here. Schmied, let's see what you got, buddy. Schmied, yeah, he's looking much better. So Schmied's going to continue here. I'm going to turn auto goalie rotate off. Schmied was angry to be sitting for a little bit. He's got that fire back in him. We'll have him start the next good little stretch now. No back-to-backs for a little while, so we're going to get a good stretch of Akira Schmied here. Uh, let's just sim. Let's just sim. Let's see the next four games. Hunter Jones is back soon enough, though. 3-2 overtime loss. No, thank you, Washington. 3-2 overtime loss. 3-2 win. Finally back in. And then a 3-2 loss. 5-4 loss. All these one-goal games. We're already at game 39. Already. This one's flying by. So game 40, game 41. Here's the halfway point. Rangers and then Sabres. Rangers. Woo-hoo-hoo! 7-0 loss against the Rangers. Oh my goodness. 
wow, do we need to make some changes here. Whew. I called this episode Eclipsing Expectations, but we have not been doing that. Leonov's going to be back to start this next one. Shmita's looking good, but I guess it was just too many starts in a row. Sheesh. Last game here against the Sabres. We're 2-6-2 two, two in our last 10. Wow, as the Sabres looking for win number 20, our expansion brothers. First period, 1-1. One, one. Bouchard and Nico Hichir. Second period, 3-1. Cousins and Havalid. Or Havalid. Shots 25-18 for the Sabres through 40. And we're down by two. Markstrom gets us back into it. Thank you. We're down by one with lots of time to go. Power play Vancouver. Killed off by the Sabres. Halfway through the third. Power play Buffalo now. We kill it off. Out shooting the Sabres. 33-30. Into the final five minutes of this one. Power play late. This is our chance. Killed off by Buffalo. And Thompson adds the empty netter. Wow. What a disappointing first half this has been. A really disappointing first half. Eclipsing expectations, not even close. Wow, and we're on pace to go what? 36, 34, and 12? Pfft. Yeah, that's not playoffs. That's not playoffs. Let's see where we're looking at this point in the entire NHL. The Blue Jackets leading the league. Wow. The East is the sixth place Flyers in a wild card spot. Wow, that Metropolitan Division is ridiculous. Same for the sixth and seventh place. In the West, get a wild card spot at, at 18. We sit 17th in the league right now with our record. 3.34 goals, 4 per game is closer to the top than the bottom. The scoring's been okay. 2.98 goals against per game is actually not bad. That's like 8th best in the league. We're just not scoring enough and just not getting it done when it needs to get done. 23.6% on the power play is among the top. There you go. So... First, second, tied for third, fourth. So we're fifth in the league on the power play. And then penalty kill, E80.8. So yeah, that's where we're struggling. Closer to the bottom than the top. More in the middle, but closer to the bottom at 80.8. Yeah. And uh, two, six, and two in our last 10. Nine, nine, and three at home. Just things not clicking. Nowhere in particular that like really stands out aside from the penalty kill. But as, you know, the, the scoring's been okay in terms of distribution. Elias Pettersson is on pace for 86 points. He has 43 and 41. Lundqvist is on pace for 48 goals with 36 points in 41 games. Quinn Hughes is on pace for 64 points, which is okay. Owen Tippett on pace for 62. LeCare Mackey on pace for over 62 because he missed a few games. Ratu back on pace for 62. There you go. Marsham 29 and 34. Hronik on pace for 46. Evan Bouchard on pace for over 40. Okay. Barabanov's on pace for 40 with a negative 7. Goldman on pace. He's slowed down now even again. 28 points. Ah, that's his pace. 28 point pace. Uh, Put Coles in 12. Neighbors 10 and 34. Niskala 8 points, negative 5. Come on, Niskala. Kuturia 8 points, negative 11. It's the bottom 6. If we could trade Niskala and Couturier, maybe, I don't know. Bouillon, 8 points, negative 9. Peak, uh, 6 points, plus 10. Hannafin, only 4 points. That's pretty rare. Hannafin's not known for the points, but he's on pace for 8 when he's always been in the 20s. That's pretty odd. On the last year of his contract, by the way, keep that in mind. He's 33 on an expiring deal. Akura, 2, 3 points in 7 games. McIsaac, 1 in 9. Goal tennis. So Hunter Jones was okay. His record not so much. 10, 10, and 4 with three shutouts though. 9, 10 save percentage, 2.74 goals against. Leonov, 6, 5, and 0. Oh. Schmid, 2, 3, and 2. Both around a 900 save percentage. Both over three goals against average. Yikes. Just a lot not clicking. In the entire NHL, just if you're curious, Brennan McLeod, 60 points in 38 games. First overall pick in 2027. Sheesh. Capri saw 52 at the age of 33. Celebrini there in Montreal. Uh, Hagens as well. Celebrini and Hagens. They said goodbye to Markstrom, and here they are. That's their one-two punch in Montreal. Then in, we should be looking at defensemen. Kale McCarth, 50 points. Lane Hudson there. Rasmus Anderson. Dougie Hamilton turning back the clock. Wow. After we traded him to Vegas, he looked to be done. 37 and 82, but back to uh, being his close to point per game pace. Injured at the moment, but still. Quinn Hughes is up there. Goaltenders. Wallstead with 20 wins. Both he and Harabel with 20 wins. So we definitely got to be looking at the trade blocks here. And Greening with uh, leading in rookie scoring, Russ Greening. So yeah, we're definitely going to be looking at the trade blocks here. Because if in my mind, yeah, we'll make some penalty kill changes. But when I look at the bottom six, do we trade Niskala? I don't think we can demote him anymore. I would say you got to trade Niskala, trade Couturier. If Tom Goldman is going to be our long-term fourth-line center, that is okay. 
But let's not fool ourselves and say he'll be a third line center. If we can say he is permanent fourth line center, trade Niskala, and get two new third liners, maybe a whole new third line if Barabanov moves down, I don't know, put Coles, I don't know. At least two new third liners, guys who are in those like 82 to 80, 45 overall ranges, that could go a very long way for us. On defense, I think we're fine. Goaltending, it's just, someone's just got to step up. I wouldn't say we're at a point where we're looking to trade or trade for our goalies. Just, you know, they're just yet. When we look at the trade value that we have to offer, Mohamed Shen's up to a 76. He's grown by one overall. Do we want to keep him? I don't know. I don't know. He's 76 now at 22. He's shown consistent growth, but it's been slow. Our Cabello, 63. Alexandra, 59. Down the list for there. Tuvkin still at an 80. Down in the AHL. What did he do so far? 20 points in 25 games. Yeah, I can take that. I can definitely live with that. Down the list there for all the potential, all the value. If you're just curious in trade value. Again, keep in mind, we have a second and three thirds in this upcoming draft, but no first. So looking at the trade blocks now, I'm thinking prospects a little bit, but I'm mostly thinking who could be a good third line fit in both the short and the long term. So if you want to know more about any prospect or player in particular, leave a comment or let me know on the Discord server, link in the description, as I always say, and I can get you more information on that player, their attributes, how they simulate, etc., etc. So uh, Anaheim, Arizona, nothing too crazy jumping out there. Boston, we spoke about Bork. That was the cheating heels comment. Maverick Bork, seven points, negative nine, two-way forward. He's still on the block here in Boston. He could be an option, but not long-term, I don't think. Maybe fourth line, but we're thinking like third line guys who can provide some scoring, but be solid defensively at the same time. Maybe Connor, Connor Zari? Hasn't played at all this season, getting buried. Maybe a Connor Zari kind of guy. Uh, and there's even, uh, yeah, yeah, that was a 79. Yeah, Buffalo, not too much here. Calgary, not too much there. Carolina, Seth Jarvis still on the block in Carolina. 16 goals and 29 points in 37 games on the year so far, playing 16-30 of ice time. Could he be a middle six guy? He, in the real world, maybe not, but he's an 86 overall. He's under 6 million. Listed as a second line forward? I don't know, maybe. JJ Paterka, expiring deal for him, 86 overall. Ryan Donato, 28 points for him on the season. Pretty interesting numbers from him, expiring contract. Fisher, Monahan, Gundler, and Nick Paul. Chicago prospects, Colorado prospects, Columbus, best team in the league right now, prospects. Dallas prospects, Detroit, Jason Zucker, expiring deal, 17 points on the year. Clem Costine, or Clem Costine, eight goals on the season for him. And Ryan McLeod, nine points in 38 games. I'm looking for a bit higher than the overall. Ryan Pollock, Jake Chikrin, some four big defensemen on the block here in Edmonton, plus Alexandrov. But I'm not sure we're looking at defense, but could keep them in mind. Lozon in Florida. Some prospects, including this guy Hickman. Uh, Jose Hickman, or Jose Hickman, 10th overall pick in 2028. He's on the block here in Los Angeles. He's a sniper, 20 years old, medium elite. Could be a good reclamation kind of project. He's done well in the AHL, but it seems as though this year not as well, the pace that he's had in the past. They have him on the block. They're, oh, they're burying him in the AHL right now. Hickman, we need that third line center soon. I could see Hickman being something. Even Chipchura has potential. Grant, Chipchura. Then there's Tiny Voros, right? The, grind, the enforcer, Tiny uh, Voros. So Hickman, the Kings are a winning team. They're buyers. Maybe they would want one of our third line guys. Okay, interesting, just putting it out there. Minnesota, JT Comfer, interesting. 85 overall, two years left though. 15 points, negative 14. Eh, I don't know about JT Comfer. Uh, Jakob Vrana, we've had him in Starfleet. He did very well. Could he be a third line scorer? He has 34 points in 41 games on pace for 68 right now. The Wild are a winning team. They're conservative buyers. Montreal Canadiens, nothing much here. Nashville Predators, Philip Forsberg. We've been thinking about him for a little while. Do we bring in another Swede? Philip Forsberg fits the first line, but we could definitely play him on the third. Five-star puck skills, five-star shooting. 30 points in 37 games on the year right now. Negative nine in Nashville. A few other players, Knack, Rodriguez, Simon Knack, Evan Rodriguez, uh, Dickinson, Amadio, Madio. The Predators are a losing team. Oh, sorry, they're a winning team, but they are sellers. Philip Forsberg, expiring contract. Does he want to chase a cup? If we can even be in cup contention eventually. The Devils have some prospects on the block. Islanders, Noah Dobson, Alex Romanov. Johnny Goudreau could be depth scoring. Hey, I don't know, though. 19 points, negative 20 in 37 games. Oof, I don't know. I don't know. New York Rangers, Ryan Lindgren, Ottawa Senators, and who else was there? No, nothing else. 
Nothing in Ottawa. Philadelphia. Ooh, Joel Faraby, 88 overall. Listed as a second line forward. He's playing 18.48 per night. Good two-way forward, four-star defense, but struggling offensively this year. 21 and 37. Actually, they're not struggling, just in throughout his simulation life and franchise mode. So-so from Joel Farabee. Tyson Forster, okay, 36, excuse me, 26 points for him in 37 games. Curry. Noah Cates, 85 overall. Uh, Alex Newhook, 85 overall. Could he be third-line center? He's 29. Could he be third-line center? Travis Sandheim, Zadorov, down the list there. Okay. Pittsburgh, yeah, Jake Enzel still on the block. He has two years left on his deal, but this year not doing so hot. 24 points in 37 games. He's 36. Uh, would fit the first line. The Penguins are definitely a losing team. One of the worst in the league at 13, 21, and 3. Do we bring back Sam Reinhart? Noah Suzuki, uh, Nick Suzuki, making over 10 million, 29 points on the year. Sam Reinhart, expiring deal, but he has 28 points. Good old Sam Reinhardt. Michael Rasmussen, could he be a third line center option? Sniper, big six foot six Michael Rasmussen. Sniper, but four goals and 24 assists. 28 points on the year from him. Chinnikov, Dorfeev. There are some options in Pittsburgh. They're a losing team who would want to take a prospect or a pick. That could be interesting. The Sharks, Wallman, etc. Seattle, as always, Vince Dunn on their block. St. Louis, Nicolas Roy. Expiring deal from him, 22 points in 38 games. Two-way forward, solid defensive attributes, could play third line for sure. Cunnins, Fikovsky, Jeannot, Hannes. Tampa Bay, nothing much. Toronto, nothing much. Vegas, Alex Kerfoot. Expiring deal from Alex Kerfoot. Uh, Washington Capitals, Ruzika, two years left after this one. Eh, an expensive contract. He's 86, but... Uh, Blake Lazat has 17 points on the year. Tom Wilson, expiring deal. Maybe Tom Wilson. Uh, the Capitals are a winning team, though, so I don't know. The Jets, Mark Shifley. Ooh, expiring deal on Mark Shifley. Could he be our third line center? 27 points in 37 games. Would fit the first line. Mark Shifley. That could be something from Winnipeg. That could be something. Now, keep in mind, when it says the, for the coach fits the first line and all that, it might not always say the third line if there are a lot of um, similarities between the first and the third. So if I look at Kapusta and I look at his, um, his preferences and all that between the lines... There are some similarities between line one and three. Bind the net, bind the net. So that's a check mark if someone fits the first line. Balance, dump. So if someone's balanced and then line three is dumped, that means they'd be a dash. S shoot cycle, that would be an X. Energy balance, that would be a dash. Balance block, that would be a dash. If someone fits the, th the first line, put them on the third. Not amazing, but it's not like it's total X's across the board. So keep the fits in mind a little bit. I know we go more, mostly by X factor and all that. I don't uh, live my life off of line fit, but keep it in mind. As we wrap up the episode, we can also think about extensions. Are we moving Noah Hannafin? He's having a down year. He's expiring. He would want to stay. He'd want like one year, five million-ish. We have 22.4 to play with. But Budio needs to move up. Maybe someone else in free agency. Barabanov, what did he do again this year? Eight, yeah, he's at 20 points on pace for 40. He would want one year, 3.8. I doubt he comes back anyways. Andrew Peak, yeah, he could, he could stay on. I doubt Couturier comes back. And for goaltenders, Leonov and Schmid both need contracts. So we'll have to see who takes the backup role. If we were to say that we're banking on free agency for a new second pair left D or for a new third line center next year, if you want to look at potential pending UFAs at the moment, these would be the centermen here. Of course, many of them won't drop, but some of them will. So they're the center options. If we look at defense... Thinking about left D, Morrissey maybe a bit too old, but Siegenthaler, Forsling, uh, Fervory, not a lot of options on the left. Maybe some guys who are right left, but yeah, just keeping it in mind for if we were to think about a trade. I think that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. The scouting's been done. The lines are going to have to be kept in mind, but more so it's the personnel. Are we saying let's trade Niskala, let's call Goldman fourth line center, let's trade Couturier, let's think about trading Barabanov, let's think about trading Hannafin? Those would be some big changes. Although we've been hovering around 500, our goals for and our goals against haven't been too, too bad. Most notably, our offense has been spread throughout the lineup, which is good. The goaltending is a bit of a question mark, but it's really the bottom six. So let me know your thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. The assistant GM's got to be vocal on this one down in the comments here on YouTube or over on the Discord server, link in the description. At the halfway point, we're not looking so hot, but we have the pieces here to turn things around in the second half as we've done before so i'm not sounding the alarms just yet i'm not hitting the panic button just yet but we will have to make some changes soon or we'll continue to go downhill as we've seen in the last three games losing 5-4 7-0 4-2 
two six and two in our last 10 changes will have to be made and i look forward to hearing what you think those changes might be so leave your thoughts over here on youtube or on discord leave a like if you enjoyed the episode and of course subscribe if you haven't already for all of our ongoing series here on the channel our series with the canucks our two live stream series here on nhl 24 and mlb the show 24 we're live every tuesday and thursday evening at 7 p.m eastern here on the channel and the team and the community will be that much stronger with you as a part of it so we'd love to have you join ladies and gentlemen i'll leave you there thank you so very much for taking the time to watch i'm looking forward to seeing you once again in the next one as we finish off year number eight heading into the second half of 2030-31.